Okay, now we're going to move the model from one side of the screen to the other. So the current animation is on the spot. All we need to do is move her in her Z axis. And if you hit the W key while she's selected, you'll see that from the hips, the Z axis is this blue axis here in this forward direction. So when she's moving back and forward across the screen, um, and I'll just show you with that Z axis, that's all the movement we need is from her to go there to there. Now in the graph editor, let's just have a look at what's currently keyed for the Z axis. And you'll see there's already a few keys set. Now we want to define these ourselves and these keys came with the model. So we need to get rid of them, otherwise they'll cause us issues. So you want just the hips section and it's Z translation. That's the only curve. You wanna select everything and then delete it. Okay, we're done with the graph editor now, so we can put that away. Now we're gonna want to start from over here in frame one. The best way to do that is to be able to see the scene from a different view. So if we go back to our multi view, uh, let's just move the outliner down here because you may require it. This is camera one and we want to be able to see the scene from a perspective view. So select in one of your other views the perspective camera. This is the default perspective that opens up the first time. And if we zoom out and just orientate the scene around a bit, you'll be able to see there's the runner and there's our video. Now this view will be useful in moving the girl across the screen. So just select back into here. We want to be in frame one. And when we're in frame one, we want our model to be right over here. So we need to select her from the hips. This was where the outliner is useful and drag her off the scene. So if we just drag her out there right away and hit the S key to keyframe that. Okay, now in frame 40, we want her to be on the other side of the screen. So if we click on frame 40, we can now move her to the other side. And you'll see that she's not visible in camera one, but we can still see her in this perspective view. So we can drag her over to this side. Now you'll want to go way past there because at frame 40, she will keep running and if she's not far enough away from the video frame, you'll see her legs kick up as she's sort of running on the spot. So when she's there, press the S key to add that keyframe. Now if you cycle back across here and run, you'll see that she's running across that scene, which is exactly what we want. The next step is to add some shadows. So go back to camera one. We want the shadows to appear as they do in the video. So we're faking the shadows in Maya. Examine the video for how the shadows are falling in the scene. And you'll see that this is a midday scene. The sun is directly above and the shadows are therefore underneath all of the objects. And if you look at the shadows on the people and on their clothes, the trees, everything falls underneath. So when we fake these shadows, we're going to have to create a sun that is essentially above our model. Now you can't create shadows without having something to project them onto. So let's create a polygon plane and drag that out onto the grid. This plane will be our canvas, so to say, for where the shadows go. So it needs to be big enough 
that it will capture all of the shadows. It doesn't have to fit perfectly with the ground in the video because it's only being used to capture, as I said, the shadows. So because they're coming straight down, we only really need a narrow strip in which they would show, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you could make that absolutely enormous and it's not gonna matter. You're not gonna see this plane later on. So there's our plane. Let's create the shadows. So for shadows, we need a directional light. Create lights directional. Okay, so we will now grab our light, which I've lost. So we go to the outliner, grab our directional light. The position of a directional light does not change its effect, okay? Um, it doesn't matter where you position it in the scene, it will always give you the same light. It's the rotation of that that matters. So with the light selected, hit the E key to change the rotation. Now, we can't see the shadows at the moment because we don't have that turned on. We want to turn on good quality rendering and the shadow. So select these two options from our view. And you can see now that the light is kind of coming from this direction because it's hitting the model in the front. Now let's rotate that light until we get the kind of shadow on the ground plane that we're after. And you can see there that we've now got a shadow that is below our model. It's not as dramatic as having really nice long shadows, but this is a daytime midday scene, so that's where it's going to go. Right, uh, now the other thing is if we look at our model, she's really, really dark and it's a daytime scene. So this is not going to look very natural when we render it in. So we might want to add an ambient light, create lights ambient which will illuminate our scene quite nicely and puts her in a more of a midday kind of tone with a very subtle shadow here. Now when we render this out, we don't want to render out the video plane and we don't want to render out the ground plane because we only want the girl and her shadow. So the first thing to do is to change the material of the ground plane. So select the ground plane and hold down the right mouse button and assign a new material. And the material we will use is this use background. So select that. The plane will disappear, which is exactly what you want. Next, we'll remove the video plane so that it doesn't show up either. Okay, so we want to select it. So again, we will switch views. Uh, in our perspective view, we can select the video. We're going to change the display mode up the top here from um, RGBA to none and that will turn it off so that we can't see it as you can see here okay so we're ready to try a render so let's do a one frame render now you'll notice i've got my timeline on frame 21 and that's so that we can see the girl in the scene and what she's going to look like at that position in the animation if we do a quick render of that scene can see that you've got the girl as you would expect and nothing else she should also have a shadow now if that shadow is black it's not going to show up in this view if you switch to the alpha channel you'll be able to see the objects that are going to render out and 
You can see the girl, obviously, but there is no shadow. And that's because we have Maya software selected as our renderer. We want to use Mental Ray, and I currently don't have it as part of this list of renderers. So to turn that on, let's just shut that window. You want to go into Window, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and scroll right to the bottom until you find Maya to Mental Ray Bundle. You can see that here. And select it to be loaded and auto load. Now, if you don't have this showing up in this plugin manager, you may need to reinstall Maya. So I didn't have it a moment ago and I had to uh, reinstall the whole program. Okay, now once you've closed that, if we go back to rendering and we change to mental ray render and just re-render the scene. Okay, we can now see all of the components that will render. And you'll notice you've got a shadow, but we've also got this. What on earth is going on? If we go back to RGBA view and have a look. You can see that we've ended up with a reflection, which is nice if she's running on a shiny mirrored surface. But in this case, she's running on grass and grass isn't a very reflective material. So we need to change the properties of that background plane so that we don't get this reflection, which is being created by Mental Ray. So I'll just grab my outliner window again so I can find that plane because it's now invisible. And if we just go to the background properties, which is our used background material that we added before, it has a reflectivity setting. Let's just turn that all the way down to zero and let's turn our reflection limit down to two. So that should make it a very dull surface. And if we do another quick render, we don't have that reflection, which is great. But do we have the shadow? Let's have a look in the alpha channel. Yes, we do. So there's that shadow nicely. So we're all ready to render out our sequence of images.